In this video, we're going to be going in depth into what drop servicing is. I'm literally answering every single question there is when it comes to drop servicing that you guys have seen through and we're going to be breaking it all down. So by the end of this video, you understand everything there is to know about drop servicing. This is really the complete guide and the only one out there right now because hey, I've been doing this for over six years now. I have multiple drop servicing businesses driving six and seven figures. I'm constantly showing you guys my results, but you don't just want to see, you know, that I'm getting great results from drop servicing, you wanna actually get the knowledge that I have so you can do it yourself, right? So I'm happy to share that with you. Let's go deep with this and answer every single question you have. And by the end of this video, you're going to be an expert when it comes to drop servicing. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the strategies and tactics that I use to build real online businesses that get results like these. And comment below any questions you have for me and I'll personally answer you. Now let's get started. Now let's jump into the video and turn you into an expert when it comes to drop servicing. So we're going to break down everything you need to know when it comes to drop servicing information. So I've literally jam packed this video with all of the questions that have ever come through. So you're going to know everything there is to know. The first question we all have when starting is what is drop servicing, right? That's a really great question. So most people are really doubtful that it's possible to earn six and seven figures without working all day in an office, right? Managing a business requires you to work all day, every day, as they say, but is that true? You know, the truth is, in my view, and what I've seen from other people and what I've lived, is that you can run a business without having to invest too much of your time, because with drop servicing, you're able to leverage the time freedom and location freedom given to us by the internet to contact decision makers around the world and sell them the services they need while making a nice profit for yourself. Plus, drop servicing doesn't require you to pay for expensive office space, you know, equipment or hire employees like conventional businesses do. And that's really the reason that we're able to make such a high profit margin because we have huge levels of demand from clients around the world. So drop servicing involves selling high quality services to businesses primarily, and it's mostly business to business. So we're a business serving other businesses and drop servicing is pretty similar to subcontracting or outsourcing in that you you provide a service and outsource the labor required for that service to freelancers from countries with lower cost of living. Since you're paying a low rate for a high quality service, you're able to achieve high profit margins on your service sales. So by hiring cheap but skilled freelancers, you can fulfill a service at a high level of customer satisfaction. So you're also offering cheaper prices than your competitors and this gives your business a competitive advantage when it comes to marketing your service. So the next question of course that comes up up, is drop servicing the same as drop shipping? You know what's the difference is, right? Because the similar words, it sounds like it's just a misspelling or something when you see drop servicing. It's still relatively unknown, but it's essentially a spin on the popular business model drop shipping, which involves taking a customer's order and shipping details and giving them to retailers or wholesalers that can fulfill their order and ship goods directly to the customer. With drop servicing, you take a customer's order for a service and you fulfill the labor required to deliver that service with the help of freelancers, okay? So it's sometimes referred to as subcontracting or outsourcing, right? But those terms primarily refer to big companies outsourcing certain aspects, whereas with drop servicing, it's the entire business essentially. So to keep things simple though, the definition of drop shipping is selling a product, so smartwatches or clothes, manufactured and delivered by a third party for profit. And then drop servicing is selling a service such as writing, animation or design produced and delivered by a third party for profit. So how does drop servicing work. Okay, let me break it down in detail for you here, okay? Drop servicing involves outsourcing or subcontracting a service to freelancers who can fulfill the service. Your role is to build a system that finds clients and as clients come to you and focus on selling them the service at a price high enough that you make a significant profit from outsourcing the service. So for example, let's say John is the founder of a health management company, right? Or a health supplement affiliate website. And he's looking for 15 1000 word articles about vitamins, minerals, and other health related topics, right? Whatever it may be. And John wants to hire a content writing company to fulfill that need that he has, right? But he's selling that the prices are too high to get that done for him with most people quoting $100 per 1,000 words. So now you come along with your drop service
service and you offer your article writing service for $50 per 1,000 words. So you hire a freelance writer from Upwork or freelancer or whatever to write articles for $20 per 1,000 words, meaning you're profiting $30 per article, right? So the total cost for John is $750, your outsourcing cost is $300, and that makes your profit $450. So that's a 60% profit margin, right? And that's pretty low compared to most drop servicing businesses. So as you can see, it's super high end and super lucrative if you scale that business model, right? So super exciting and that's why drop services love drop servicing. I really love drop servicing and of course, you know, I found this business model, but it was also the only one that gave such high profit margins with everything else. The profit margins were really low and you know the clients are happy, right? So in John's situation, you know, he's happy because he's saving money. You're happy because you're making money and the freelancers are happy because they're making money as well. So these numbers are just estimates by the way, guys, and will of course vary based on the drop servicing business model that you create. But this should give you a general overview of the basic principle behind drop servicing. So this drop servicing business model can be used for content writing, design, video animation, web development, lead generation, copywriting, essentially any service that can be fulfilled over the internet. Now, there are five steps for building a drop servicing business. First, finding competitors and studying their business models. Step two is finding teams that can deliver the service at a cheaper price than your competition. Step number three is creating a compelling offer. And step number four is building the marketing channels to bring in new customers. And then you have step number five, which is automating the entire process to free up your time and serve more customers in the most efficient way possible. So the next question here is, how much does it cost to start drop servicing? Well, you don't need any money to start drop servicing, okay guys, which is awesome, right? But as with every business, you know, the more money and resources you have in terms of time and energy, that whatever you've got to deploy, the easier and quicker it's going to be for you. Start a drop servicing business, guys, which is awesome, right? But that said, all you need is an email address. As the founder, your role is to communicate between your clients and your team. Thankfully, email is free, and I'm going to give you some of the fundamental things that you'll need for a drop servicing business or website. So I've got some links below this video for some of the tools that you can use to build your drop servicing business, by the way. You've got the tools for your website, you know, WordPress, ThemeForest, Thrive Architect. We're gonna build your website, get a domain and hosting, which is essentially what hosts your website. So you can get Namecheap or Bluehost custom email addresses. So you can have your business name at the end of your email address. So your name at your business name.com, for example. And then you can choose your business name using things like name generators, such as the Shopify business name generator. But realistically, these basics shouldn't set you back more than a few hundred dollars at most to get your first sales. And having the basics makes you look more professional and trustworthy, right? Even if you do make a sale via email without a website, you're going to eventually need an established drop servicing website just to help you automate your business. Eventually, you can hire a project manager to automate communication between your team and the client so you can achieve 100% automation. And that's made possible through software and people taking the work out of your business for you. So in the beginning, you might run a lot of the things in your drop servicing business yourself. So you can keep all of the profit for yourself and spend as little money as possible as you start to get more sales. You automate more and more of your business, taking yourself out of the business so it runs without you. And that's what gives you that freedom that you're after. So the next question we have here is what can you drop service? Well, any service you can find freelancers for online. You know, in general, the more simple the service you offer, the easier it is to automate the repeatable steps involved in its production. So while any online service can be drop serviced, you'll likely end up either in design and creative fields, writing or sales and marketing or automation. Is that by far what dominates the online service industry today, guys? And there is huge growing demand out there for them. So it's much easier for you to get sales. So I've got some drop servicing business ideas for you here as well. And these are based on my own experience drop servicing myself all these years. So these are great ones that are working right now based on what I've seen in my own research. So you've got creative art and illustration, graphic design and animation. You have writing, so editing and proofreading, uh, content writing, blog writing, copywriting, technical writing, then the sales and marketing services. So things like search engine optimization or SEO, lead generation, social media management, market research, email marketing, and the list goes on. But these are some of the best ideas that you can use right now. So the next question I have here is where can you find people to hire for your drop servicing business? Well, the best place to find drop service freelancers obviously is a freelancer website where the freelancers hang out. The freelance marketplaces have countless freelancers to choose from 
and they have profiles that you know you can view and select from based on you know different categories so you can also post a specific job and have freelancers apply to your job posting and you know some examples of freelancer marketplaces that I've included as links below this video are fiverr.com upwork.com and freelance.com but there are many more out there and these are great places where we can find great freelancers to deliver high quality services at a low cost for your drop servicing business now you're probably wondering you know which should I choose well it's a great question I mean the marketplace you choose will depend on which service you're offering so Fiverr and freelance.com tend to be the cheaper options but this generally entails lower quality services and then student job boards can be great to find you know really cheap uh, native speaking freelancers Upwork is the largest freelance marketplace and on this platform you can find some very high quality freelancers from all categories including writing marketing design whatever it may be you know web development so on and so forth overall though Upwork and Fiverr are the best places to start you'll find everything you need there but before hiring someone it's really important to review their profile feedback and ratings and the number of years of experience they have in their fields and of course the price that they're going to be charging you so that's super important so focus on high quality reviews and look for someone who replies quickly and in a professional manner and is really enthusiastic about helping you don't rush the hiring process you know it's really worthwhile investing a bit of time to ensure that you know you're bringing in high quality freelancers who are actually committed to helping your business in the long term because you're not just outsourcing work to freelance guys and with drop servicing you're building a real business with a real team that's going to be working with you for years and years and years that's how you build a real business you don't just purchase Fiverr gigs or something like that okay so as shown I've put a search filter for animators on upwork.com and without even looking I found some crazy good freelancers right there's bound to be much cheaper freelancers too and if you spend more time looking of course you'll find a lot better ones as well so the next most commonly asked question that comes up is drop servicing profitable and if it's done right drop servicing is very very profitable how profitable you will be depends on your ability to package and sell your service but hiring cheap freelancers is only part of the equation guys you still must deliver a high quality service if you don't you know you may land a sale or two but you will not get repeatable business and repeat business is where you can make a lot of money especially with services that are required regularly so clients paying month after month for example one of my job servicing businesses I get a 30% repeat buy rate and that's pretty high rate so it's essentially a flywheel where the more clients you get the more clients you get and that just scales and scales and scales if you're delivering a high quality service at a cheap price and you're marketing your service to the right people you'll make an amazing profit now the next most common question is is drop servicing worth it so this can mean many things but drop servicing is especially easy to start as you don't need to know how to produce the service you're selling you leave that to the freelancer teams who are the experts and if you stay consistent and follow the right steps it's possible and realistic to expect that you can make enough money to replace a full-time job without investing the typical 40 hours per week and the company's normal job right it's important to remember that while drop servicing is legitimate and can be lucrative you do have to put in the work and stay committed to your business to ensure it grows especially in the beginning stages right pretty obvious so to succeed you need to focus on acquiring customers and drop servicing at the cheapest price possible and give them an offer they can't refuse the bottom line is that drop servicing is great because you don't do the grunt work but you reap the benefits at the same time the customer and freelancer and you are all happy and that's the most important thing at the end of the day and that's the great thing about drop servicing you know at the end of the day that your clients are happy you're happy and your team is happy everyone in the equation is happy and it's a win-win situation another commonly asked question is drop servicing even possible well <laughs> drop servicing is possible you can see that by all of the results that we've shown you from ourselves our students and other drop services out there too and I'll include some of those results in this video here if there is demand there is a supply so all that is required is for you to supply a service that's in demand and position yourself so you beat the competition and make a profit it's as simple as that in life there's this pervasive perception that you'd go to school go to university and then hopefully get a job related to your degree well there is nothing wrong with working hard at a job and earning money just that it's possible to live with more freedom and be free from the constraints of a boss's chisel while you know drop servicing won't turn you into an overnight success it's not a garage quick scheme it's a real online business and some degree of work is required it is not difficult to earn enough 
enough money to live comfortably without having to work typical full-time hours. You just have to put the work in upfront to automate your drop servicing business and have other people's time work for you. So there are so many opportunities out there and drop servicing allows us to inject ourselves into the virtual economy and get a slice of the action. And this thing is just growing and growing and growing. And the opportunity only gets bigger and bigger by the day. So what even makes drop servicing possible? Well, first of all, you have freedom of communication. So you can contact companies to connect with your team that delivers a service they need, right? The team works for you and you have a project manager who manages the communication between the two. Next, you have freedom of location. So you can live wherever you want because your drop servicing business model is fully online, right? Allowing you to move around and work from multiple locations. And then you have freedom of time. So not only can you work where you want, but you can also work when you want because your business is completely remote. So you can remove yourself with people and software. And this gives you total freedom and you don't even need to spend the majority of your day monitoring and managing business processes. So the next question is, why does drop servicing work? Okay, well, it's pretty obvious, right? I mean, companies need external help. They spend billions of dollars on the services they need in many cases, and it simply doesn't make sense for them to hire employees for specific services that they can outsource work for at a fixed price. Furthermore, many companies need services that they simply don't have the knowledge and skills to do themselves. It's just too much work for them to build the infrastructure for a specific service when they can just hire experts to do it for them. So they often have a dedicated budget for these types of services every quarter and they need to spend their budget or else you know the boss will take it away from them. So you're probably wondering though why would these companies work with you right? Well it comes down to pretty simple economics okay. If you're able to provide a service for them at a similar level of quality to other service providers at a low price then the logical option for them is to work with the cheaper service even though you're a freelancer on a site like Upwork, Fiverr it doesn't mean that your clients will go looking uh, for the same freelancers on those marketplaces. Often my clients even come to me and say, hey, I tried those marketplaces, didn't go well, I wanna work with you instead. Because companies prefer to work with other companies because it's easier for them and other companies seem more trustworthy. Companies delivering services have proven systems and processes which provide certainty, reliability, and consistency. And in drop servicing, you are the marketer, okay? And that means you're presenting and positioning your service in the best way in comparison to your competitors, right? So another question that comes up is how big is the drop servicing market, right? And this is a fun one to answer because it's huge. The US business service sector consists of about 410,000 establishments with combined annual sales of around $770 billion. So using data we've collected, the market is around $1.2 trillion with estimates of up to $5 trillion when including factors such as market share of unlisted companies. So the takeaway is that the service industry is enormous and there's no short of opportunity to get a slice of this money circulating by positioning yourself in the right place and providing a valuable and competitive offer. Even though this market is enormous, it's always growing, especially as our world moves more and more online. So once you learn how to create a drop servicing system for yourself, you can apply it to other services, reinvest your profits and scale. You can continue to expand and grow multiple systems to scale horizontally and vertically. So what is the future of drop servicing? Well, as the structure structures and systems of companies become more remote and more digital, they encounter greater efficiencies, meaning lower costs. So every business has a primary goal of maximizing profits, right? I mean, you all know that. And by working with remote and digital structures, companies save time and money through increased efficiency. So the trend of companies becoming more digital over the last five years is growing and will continue to grow and is gonna grow considerably in the future, meaning it's getting bigger and bigger, more exponential. So companies are far from being completely digital, but this transformation is happening very quickly and more companies are making the transition to having more of the infrastructure become digital, especially right now, right? So this is a selling point for drop services. Most employees say they want to work remotely and remote employees save companies money, they increase profits and it's really a win-win for the companies. So the issue is that many companies don't really know how to go remote and as drop services, you can command a massive amount of work from companies who want to translate to you know a more virtual structure. So the next important question is how to start a drop servicing business. Okay so while there's a lot to do getting started is really the easiest part. There are some consistent steps all drop services go through in their journey and it starts by first of all finding a 
service that's selling well in the market. So for example, writing, web design, or video animation, some great options, and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. What I mean is there's so much demand, there's room for you to squeeze in and provide a service, especially because you're undercutting local businesses' prices and creating a compelling offer. No one drop servicing business can handle all of the demand because you know they're constrained simply by the number of people uh, in their team. At a certain point, it can't get bigger. So that's why there's so many drop servicing businesses and there's always room for more to enter because demand is expanding faster and new companies are popping up. Now, number two, you wanna research what other competitors are doing in the market. So find competitors and ask the following questions, okay? What are their prices? How do they structure the offer? What pain points do they focus on for their customers? How are they marketing their services? What's the traffic like? Where is their traffic even coming from? Then once you've answered those questions, you want to research what freelancers are doing, check the top worker freelancers in the market you're targeting, how do they position themselves, who are they working with, who have their biggest projects been with, answer those questions and then move on to number four, determine margins. So to get your margins, take the competitor price and subtract the average freelance price. For example, if your competitor price is $5,000 for a website and your freelancer price is $1,000, your potential profit margin is $4,000, right? And perhaps you undercut your competitor by $1,000 for the same quality website, meaning you're still receiving $3,000 with only $1,000 invested into your freelancer labor. And that's pretty insane profit margins, right? And the number five, once you've got all those steps sorted out, is just market, 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 okay? Scale up your number of clients by putting out more offers into the market once you've proven that your offers are working and it's competitive enough to create demand relatively easy to close on. And then it's time to scale and automate your business. So number six is of course automate, you know, automate the entire process to get your freedom, okay? Automate an A to Z process from introducing a new client and your funnel to delivering their services, refine and optimize the process to save time using people and software as you pull in more clients into your drop servicing business model. So the most important thing I wanna give you guys here as well is to copy the competition. We're not here to reinvent the wheel as drop services. We never reinvent the wheel, okay? There's already systems out there that are working and making money and we simply need to reverse engineer those systems and make them work for ourselves. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is focusing on what they think people want. When what you should really be doing is focusing on what's already working in the market. And this is why it's so important to do a competitor analysis to understand what's working for your successful competitors and why it's working. So doing something that's never been done before might work, but the chances are when you're using your competitors as a guide, you're using data as proven to give a return and your chances of success are a lot higher. And it's simple, you know, to find your competitors, you just search for the service that you're providing on Google and type service after it, for example. You can search content writing service, proof writing service, logo design service, branding service, or sales video service, right? So create a list of your competition and then from there, see what's working and why it's working. Find the common trends between them. We reverse engineer their process. You take the guesswork out of what your potential customers are receptive to, right? Then focus on changing your offer to be more compelling and competitive than your competition within the same framework of their business models. Generate profit and sales so you don't need to create a Facebook or Uber or Google to live a life of freedom with financial independence and location independence. That's what most people are after, right? And some people are, you know, even hesitant to start because they have the idea in their head that they need a revolutionary idea to start a successful business. But don't fix what's not broken. Focus on a specific service that's already selling. Another, you know, common mistake is thinking that you can do everything. Well, there are businesses out there that follow the drop servicing model and do everything from website design to video, but as a beginner, you must focus on one service or variations of one service when you first start, so you have that focus. You don't wanna spread yourself too thin and not get anything achieved. Focus on one thing, for example, you know, your business can focus on writing or you can have a business that focuses on uh, video animation. You can even focus on the more specific niche to give yourself a competitive advantage, such as copywriting or content writing. Either way, it's important not to go too broad, at least in the beginning. Preferably pick a service that you have experience with. For example, if you used to be a website designer, then following a web design drop servicing model is probably a good idea because you've got experience, it does help obviously, but you'd understand the nuances of conversation in the industry, etc. However, you don't need to have any experience in the industry itself as you're not the one providing 
providing the service, guys. Your freelancers are the experts, right? You're simply the middleman between the freelancer and the client. So another important and common question is how to build a drop servicing team. Well, number one is you wanna hire freelancers on a per project basis. So to start your team, you need to hire employees, but hiring employees means you're paying them consistently when you don't necessarily have clients paying you consistently to fill their salaries, right? So you don't need to do that. All you need is freelancers working with you on a per project basis, because it would be risky to hire them as employees, okay? So to mitigate that risk, we just hire them on a project by project basis, have a pool of freelancers, have a list of freelancers ready, and when you close with a client, you can commission the freelancer by paying a fixed price for the project after you get paid. As discussed before as well, working with freelancers on Fiverr or Upwork's a great option to start with. They'll allow you to only spend money when it's giving you a return on your investment, and when you have a project, that's the only time you're spending money in drop servicing typically. So usually you only pay 50% upfront to the freelancer and the client might have already paid you 100% and then 50% on completion to the freelancer. Though the structure of the payment you know, may depend on what you set up, but 50-50 tends to be the simplest and most common approach, especially for larger projects, while paying after the work is completed is typical for smaller commissions. So other tasks such as project management can be more suited for per hour payment. So there's different ways of doing it and you can really just adjust it based on what you're doing. But option two is hiring freelancers full time. If you've got consistent repeat business that you bring on the freelancers full time, it can allow you to save money as you'll likely pay less with a regular salary instead of contracting work when you have good long-term clients. Um, so they should only work full time and you know regular freelancers on payroll if you've got those full time clients and if you have the work to support them. But that's more of a long-term thing. Uh, the number three, I mean, if you want, you can even have your own office and team, right? It's completely optional. Uh, not many people go there out, of course, uh, but you may want to have an office with your team or maybe you want a fully remote team, which is more common uh, forever. It's really up to you though. You know, while having a remote team is a great option, growing a team in house is a possibility too. Um, just depends on what you prefer to do at the end of the day. But the point is, drop servicing gives you so much freedom to make your own choices and how you structure your business. So how do you grow your own income from $0 to $10,000 per month with drop servicing? Well, in the drop servicing blueprint, there's a module where we build a brand new business from scratch and screen record every single step of the process so you can see how it's done from start to finish. $10,000 can seem pretty daunting, maybe even an unreachable number, but it's not. I mean, does $1,000 seem more realistic? It can be a good goal to start right from there, um, but you need to figure out how many clients you need to get to $1,000 or $10,000, whatever your starting goal is. To get to $10,000, all you need is 10 $1,000 clients per month, right? That's an easy way to think about it. It's not that crazy, it's not that impossible. If the number seems high, if you keep 50% of your clients after one month, then you only need two months of closing 10 clients per month to get to $10,000 after that. Then you just maintain clients clients, which may only require three to four sales per month to hit your target income number. So if a freelancer charges $500, then you need 20 sales. And if your service sells for $5,000, then you only need two sales. So figure out how many sales you need for your desired monthly revenue, which will kind of be built around what you want to spend money on. Even reverse engineer what's required so you can create sales targets for you and your team. So the next question I have here is how to find high paying clients. Well, high ticket clients with drop servicing is pretty much all the clients. I mean, one good practice is also cold emailing decision makers. It's just one marketing method that I can throw out there. It's very cheap to do compared to paid advertising, for example. And you can use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to customize searches and find decision makers of companies. And it's an extremely useful tool and it will allow you to search for people based on their job titles, the business they work with, company size, and other factors. And it'll help you create custom lists of potential customers. So you can message them on LinkedIn or tools to validate their email addresses and contact them uh, that way. And that's just a simple process you can follow. Um, also, you know, you can create specific search criteria on LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So for example, job title, founder, company size, one to 10, search term, digital agency or design agency, countries, US, Canada. Right now, you will you can also have a list of founders and CEOs or small to medium sized agencies. And then you can set up campaigns with cold email templates that you can test to determine what offer is working best in terms of getting positive responses from decision makers that need your service and you could send you know for example 100 emails with one template 100 with another template so on and so forth then just analyze the results and you'll get a decent idea with that amount of data the more
more data the better obviously. But essentially you're determining which offer is working better and then just doubling down on that, scaling up with that one. And look at, you know, the open rates, click through rates, conversion rates, repeat the steps, use the email template that performs best. So you're essentially doing continuous testing and choosing the one that's working best and then using that one testing more and continuously refining and improving the metrics to get more sales at a lower price. So here's some important notes on cold emailing as well. It's crucial to warm up new email addresses, meaning you shouldn't create an email address and then start sending hundreds of emails as your emails will likely go to spam. And it's also advisable not to use the email address of your website, meaning your name at your website's domain.com. You should set up one at .co for example, because you don't want to risk having your legitimate domain email flagged for spam. If your website is called designagency.com, you can buy the domain designagency.co or another domain extension variation and use the address instead of, you know, John head design agency.co you can use warmupinbox.com to warm up your email or simply start with a small amount of emails and gradually increase the amount you see daily from 10 emails per day in week one 20 in week two so on and so forth and if you're doing things right and writing emails that aren't spam you shouldn't worry too much when developing emails remember that you're speaking to humans and you should keep things short and concise decision makers are really busy people right they're running companies so in this video I also want to go a little bit deeper into one of the drop servicing case studies so we're going to get into Superside, which is a design drop servicing company. Superside is a large and established design company that follows the drop servicing business model. They offer a wide range of services related to design, including web and mobile design, PowerPoint presentation design, and much more, specifically targeting agencies, startups, and enterprise teams, meaning they're providing large quantities of work. So it's obviously a large and established company, as you can see, right? So it's not likely in your best interest to try and serve such a wide variety variety of services in the early days of your business uh, in the same capacity as they do at least in the beginning right regardless uh, they serve as a good example of a drop servicing model so when a client is browsing through any website including SuperSide, they're going to be looking at three factors quality reliability and price so here's how they're effectively showcasing these qualities to increase the probability of a potential customer buying their services quality is determined by the service you're providing so in this case there is a menu option called Our Work, which showcases previous examples of design work completed by the team with options to categorize the work so that potential customers can find portfolio examples most similar to the desired projects. And these examples give a client an accurate understanding of the quality of the product that they can expect from working with this business, right? So you can have examples that you could have case studies if you were doing advertising. There's all kinds of options that you can do that provide that quality. Reliable Reliability is one of the most important qualities for onboarding a new client, especially if they're discovering the team for the first time and don't have a solid understanding of the reputation. Essentially, it's the question of why should we trust you, right? So as shown on the website, there's a menu section for testimonials, which shows real comments from various previous clients happy with the quality of the service. And when you begin, you may not have any examples of work, so you can simply get them from your freelancers. And that's the easiest way of doing it um, and you can also just offer some kind of deal such as a uh, onboarding clients with a discount it's not recommended to write fake reviews uh, you want to get real reviews for your business but you can if you want um, the unit price okay price is one of the most important qualities if your price is too high people will not buy from you and likewise if your price is too low people will presume the quality is bad so what they have been able to do is they provide pretty high prices these days but the price is still low compared to the usual agency and when they started out they did have lower prices and it's what we recommend you do with drop servicing as well. You can just scale up your prices over time as you have more examples and you have more reliability. Now on your website as well, you want to explain the process to potential customers because you want to take out as much ambiguity as possible. You want to make it really understandable on your website, right? So you need to have an in-depth detailed process of what they're going to experience when they work with you and you can see they have that as well. They explain the process from buying to production and delivery and then then even when your potential clients get on a call with your sales team, they can also take them through the process. You can also offer discounts and all kinds of different offers to get potential clients to want to buy with you right now. And that's something that you can do pretty easy with drop servicing because you know we have such low prices compared to our competitors, which enables us to use those low prices as reasons that the client should buy right now. So you could say, hey, look, usually our prices are as high as whatever example competitors price, but right now we're offering a 50% discount and that's why our price is so low. What that does is removes the kind of questions
questions of, you know, why are you so cheap? And it gives them a reason to want to buy right now because you're going to tell them that, you know, the sale is 50% discount or whatever is only going to be on for one week. Um, so the next question is, should I take a drop servicing course? Okay. I mean, you know, of course it's work. I would say it's worth it, you know, in taking a drop servicing course because obviously I sell one, so I'm a little bit biased and I, and I buy them all the time as well in terms of other courses, obviously on drop servicing, but it saves you money. It saves you time instead of spending months trying to figure out what to do and how to do it. You can take a course that explains step by step how to grow the drop servicing business. And it's possible to learn these serious skills and drop servicing. You could do it on your own, but it's going to take a lot longer, right? You know, why not, you know, have a course, get personal coaching from people that have been doing it for years and years, showing you while you look over their shoulder, click by click what to do and what to say, how to build one of these drop servicing businesses, right? So for example, why would a client hire you instead of directly from Upwork? That would be a question, for example, right? Well, it's being able to answer questions like that that will help you position yourself correctly as a business. They will enable you to close larger deals and grow your business. And that's why drop servicing courses are super worthwhile if you're serious about turning the drop servicing business model into an automated source of revenue. So the drop servicing blueprint is obviously the most comprehensive drop servicing course available. That's not just me talking about it. That's based on the results and comments of my students and what I've seen out there. I mean, just look at all these results and comments of people in the course. Look at all the results that they're getting and posting in our community here. So by far, bar none, it's the best drop servicing community course and coaching program out there. And of course, we have a partnership program where you partner with me as well. So obviously a pretty good investment for them, right? Um, so I am biased, but it's just based on the feedback that I'm getting. So I've seen people from all walks of life around the world do this. And what our students have been able to achieve is pretty amazing. So yeah, if you're looking into a drop servicing course and community, obviously I'd recommend ours. Um, I'm biased, of course, just look at what other people are saying though, right? And if you want to do it yourself, that's cool too. Um, just follow along with our free YouTube content because, you know, I'm trying to help you guys do, you know, go through that way as well. Um, and bottom line, you know drop servicing is a simple and underrated business model that you can take advantage of today. There are people and companies out there who need services and you can be the person providing that service for a profit. This is the best time to start a drop servicing business, live a life of financial freedom for yourself. And right now, the world is going online faster than ever before. So drop servicing is one of the quickest ways to start making money online within a short period of time without needing to invest too much time learning new skills. And listen, the video is not over yet. If you want to get more help in terms of a course, coaching or community and drop servicing, click the link in the description to learn more. If you haven't already, click subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss out on any more strategies and tactics to help you make money online like this. And comment below, you know, any questions you have for me and I'll personally answer you. And what I recommend now, if you want to go deeper, check out this video here and I'll see you in the other video. Talk to you there.